Lion. All right, everyone, we're back. We have remade the game. Uh, I'll probably just start the VOD from this point, but uh, we're in the grand finals. We got Rickson Slayer, which uh, won in the semifinals, aka Tatsu. They're going to be playing on our Radiant side. And our dire side is going to be the four goons plus noble wings. We uh, did have to remake because uh, Rickson Slayer picked up Phantom Lancer, and apparently uh, uh, Phantom Lancer has been banned uh, this week due to uh, game crashes resulting from that hero. So uh, instead, they paused the game and they decided to switch their hero to Anti Mage. And uh, the final pick from uh, our uh, dire side was the Templar Assassin. So that's where we stood in terms of the draft. Um, but yeah, we've remade. They uh, had to wait for me to get into the lobby because I don't know why. Ever since Reborn came out, it takes forever for the game lobbies to show up for me. Most of the time, I actually have to restart my client every time in between games just to make the things show up. I, it's just it's completely aggravating. I end up normally having the admins and most of the players added so I can hop into uh, the lobbies immediately. But uh, I forgot to add the, the admin tonight, so... That was my bad, but uh, we're in the game, so uh, yeah, everything's kind of sorted out. We do have a pause immediately, though, so uh, hopefully that'll get sorted and we'll be uh, set to go and start off the grand finals tonight. Once again, uh, guys, this is the last uh, Sunday of the month. That means we do have $100 on the line, so uh, 20 bucks to, to each player on the winning team. I always kind of consider it as pizza money on top of the regular bragging rights associated with winning uh, SCS for the week. I do believe we had uh, a little bit better of a turnout tonight than we had uh, the last couple of weeks. I think it was 28 teams. I might be a little bit wrong on that number, but it was around there. So slightly better turnout, but still not uh, the numbers we, uh, we used to see. So hopefully that'll uh, kind of return. Uh, in the coming weeks. As, uh, I'm a big fan of SCS. I used to play in a long time ago when there used to be 100 and 120, 130 teams pretty much every week. But uh, it's kind of lost a lot of teams. But it uh, looks to be rebounding. So hopefully that'll that'll come back. But uh, let's introduce the teams and the players. On our Radiant side, we're going to have Rixon Slayer. We've got 14 plus 2 playing the Chaos Knight. PZD is going to be playing the Anti Mage. The guy with the Chinese character is going to be playing the Lion. We've got Dig Dig on the Earth Spirit, and Schwan's going to be playing the Doom. And oh, we've got 30 seconds to battle. four goons plus Noble Wings. They're uh, going kind of aggressive here, taking over the Radiant side of uh, the river here. But it uh, looks like they're not going to find anyone, so let's introduce them. We've got Noble Wings playing the Medusa. we got Damn Daniel playing the uh, Winter Wyvern. We got Sparky the Sharky playing the Vengeful Spirit. We got R R R R R R R R R R R. I think I got counted those out right. He's gonna be playing the Templar Assassin, and we got Jonathan playing the Faceless Void. And speaking of Jonathan, he's gonna get stunned up as he goes for the bottom rune, but uh, he unfortunately wasn't able to grab that. So uh, the teams will split the runes, both mid heroes. Well, at least the Chaos Knight got uh, the bottom one, and it looks like he will be the mid-hero for Rixon Slayer, and the uh, Templar Assassin got the top one. So it will be both uh, mid laners picking up those bounty runes. As for our lanes, it looks like they are starting to kind of take shape, as we've got the Templar Assassin versus that Chaos Knight in the mid lane. Top lane, we don't see a hero up there on the Radiant side just yet, they're going to be going up against the Medusa and the Vengeful Spirit. We expect the Doom to make his way up there, but starting off in the jungle, um, as we, we typically see Dooms do, but we expect him to probably move up to the top lane. As for the bottom lane, looks like Faceless Void's going to be the off laner for our dire side. And he's going to be going up against the Lion and the Anti-Mage. And we've kind of seen the Earth Spirit moving around quite a bit already early on, but it looks like he's kind of found a home in the bottom lane just... For now, at least. But I imagine he'll continue to move around and kind of keep putting pressure on that mid-TA. But they're going to try to wrap around here onto Jonathan. Just Lion throwing in a couple auto attacks. A roll forward from Dig Dig will be off the mark. But Jonathan will uh, time walk away. Damn Daniel's now made his way down towards the mid lane. So he's going to sit behind the TA. And we actually may see him kind of stay here, knowing that... Most likely, Rickson Slayer is going to try to keep putting pressure on that TA. It is pretty scary when all of a sudden another hero rotates in 
and the Chaos Knight's already the hero in the mid lane. It can be very, very scary. So uh, the TA is going to have to be very, very mindful of that. So some pings already coming out. Rixon Slayer acknowledging the fact that uh, there's going to be some potential stacking of this Ancient Camp. As we see Damn Daniel already doing that, and look at this. Lion's going to come in, he's going to block it with the Sentry Ward, but immediately he's going to run into the Winter Wyvern, so he's not going to be able to place that Sentry Ward down. He's going to use the tree to kind of block Vision there. He was hoping he could pick up that regen rune, but uh, the Winter Wyvern, Damn Daniel was uh, a little bit ahead of him there, and threw the auto attack into the destroy at 14 plus 2. Using the uh, Reality Rift to actually get a last hit there. Look at a lot of a lot of pinks coming out as we've got a smoke here from Rixon Slayer. As they're going to roll on in on RRR. The Doom actually is the one with the Earth Spirit here coming in for the kill. And they will find it. Schwan getting that kill on the Doom. Rixon Slayer once again get first blood in the game. And Damn Daniel will continue to stack these Ancients. The Rixon Slayer really want to get in there and block that up, making sure that they're not able to keep stacking those Ancients. But they may also just kind of accept the fact, oh, we're going to have a roll in here from Dig Dig. Sparky the Shark, he's in trouble. The Ventral Spirit will throw out the stun on the Doom, but it's not going to be enough to get her out of there safely as Rixon Slayer gets their second kill of the game. Going back to that point I was making about the uh, the ancients, not not Roche, the ancients, um, is that they Brixon Slayer may say, okay, we wanted to block it up, we tried to make a move so that they they could place a Sentry Ward. Now they may say, okay, we're, we're not going to be able to get in position to do that. We have to accept the fact that they're going to be able to keep stacking those ancients. How are we going to deal with it? How are we going to be able to contest them either taking these ancients or how are we going to take advantage of them making a rotation to destroy those ancient stacks and how are we going to get an advantage of our own at the same time sparky the sharky once again ventures out and he'll run immediately into schwan and dig dig once again as he's going to go down and now noble wings not in a lot of trouble but he will lose a, a good amount of hp as he drops down to about half hp and half mana damn daniel also making a rotation towards the mid lane but 14 plus 2 playing uh, back and pretty safe as he continues to uh, bottle crow there. I guess it's not really bottle crowing when both uh, careers are walking. As uh, this one just got uh, just got his wings. As for our early CS. Uh, oh, actually, I missed a kill in the mid lane as Damn Daniel was still hanging around there. And I didn't even see him coming in on the minimap. But uh, they claim a kill on 14 plus 2. So the CK does go down. That uh, is a, a pretty rough lane for the Chaos Knight. When it is just a 1v1 against the TA. So we saw him kind of losing a little bit of HP. And then just as the TA needs to be wary of rotation coming in from one of the heroes of the Radiant side to help out the CK. The CK needs to be uh, also a little bit wary of uh, a hero coming in and helping out the Templar Assassin. Especially now as we got level 6 available so the psionic traps can get dropped and further slow down that chaos knight as far as cs looks uh slight late for pzd over uh noble wings just three cs but the the more significant difference is the number of denies we're at 17 denies on noble wings compared to pzd's eight so denying more CS from the offlaner or XP from the offlaners, Jonathan, he's not only had his uh, his XP denied from the creeps, but he's going to take a fall here. As, oh, no, he's not. He's going to be able to leap into the trees there as uh, he eats a mango to be able to do so. So he can uh, time walk away as PZD had already burned through all his mana. Uh, unfortunately, while that was going on, we did miss a kill in the mid lane as 14 plus 2 managed to drop the mid uh, Templar Assassin in R. He's going to pick up an Arcane Rune and start moving up towards the top lane where Schwan and Dig Dig are looking for further action as they want to go for Noble Wings this time. Sparky the Sharky nowhere nearby so they're going to go for the Deuce instead and Noble Wings, oh the Reality Rift will pull him way out of position and this is going to be a dead Dusa as uh, 14 plus 2 will be the one to score the last hit there. As Rick's on Slayer now Take a lead, five to one. 
in terms of hero kills. We saw last game, they were dead even with their opponents in the early game at five kills apiece, and then they just finished the game 25 and five. So uh, if this is any game like the uh, the last game, that could be the only, that could just be the one kill that uh, four goons and noble wings will score this game, but I, I doubt that's actually going to be the case. And uh, thanks Tom for dropping the, the T-Tours in chat after mi I missed that kill. Radiance there was more action going on at the same time. I can't, I can't get both of it. I wish I had the button for a replay feature, but I guess that's, uh, I want to say it's in the works, but it's, it's kind of down the road in terms of my <laughs> production levels. Noble Wings pushes out and he's going to push out directly into a Doom. Another great reality rift from 14 plus 2. Pulls Noble Wings back in a favorable position as they score another kill on that Doosan. Just really, this dire side, they haven't really been able to stabilize this early game and get the farm where they want it. And that's a little bit concerning because they're going up against an Animage and they haven't really been able to contest the Animage's farm as Jonathan's doing a little bit of that right now as he leapt forward, but he doesn't have any mana to, to drop a Chronosphere and we had a TP coming in from the Lion. So Jonathan actually doesn't know that Lion's nearby. So he needs to be a little bit careful of that. It doesn't look like any further action's gonna come in as Lion's just gonna go and get the creeps off the tower. Or at least try to, there we go. Ping's coming in. Schwan, oh, he's found a stack and he's going to clear it up by using that uh, Wild Wing Tornado. Do a lot Radiant's of damage to that stack. Is under attack. You know, they've spotted 14 plus 2 walking over the Psionic Trap so they know he's making a rotation up towards the top lane. Will they be able to counter gank him? Oh, he's just going to turn around. He's going to start farming. As uh, Jonathan has Radiant's finally bottom. gone down the bottom lane to the line. And Animage have scored the kill there. Now Schwan and 14 plus 2 are in trouble, but they just turn around. They go on Sparky the Sharky instead. But a nice freeze there from Dam Dinya will keep the Ventral Spirit alive. And it's the Chaos Knight that goes down instead. Great play there coming out from Four Goons plus Noble Wings. And Schwan will be able to get out of there safely. But he's going to once again get slowed down by another Psionic Trap. And uh, the damage is coming in. They're not going to back away here Schwan is actually gonna go down so he doesn't get away safely and now dig dig and the lion rotate on in but they're just a little bit too late to the party PZD and Jonathan once again going at it as the chrono is gonna get dropped and immediately TP coming in from Sparky the Sharky just in time to throw out that magic missile his TP took a little bit longer because Jonathan had just recently TP to that tower but he did just barely get there in time to throw the magic missile before the Chronosphere had ended. Dyer's Otherwise, PZD would have been able to blink away on that Animage and they would have missed the opportunity there for a kill. I don't know if that was calculated or maybe a little bit of luck or maybe a little bit of both. But, uh, the event's just barely getting there in time. Oh, R is in trouble in the mid lane as there was, there was smoked up in the mid and they're just gonna immediately burst him down the finger bang from the lion doing a good chunk of damage there and dig dig getting the last hit Dyer's middle PZD did he what did he spend his gold on did he just upgrade his treads where did his gold just go I think he already had the perseverance I don't see anything on the courier I am unsure it must have just been him buying the treads. Either way, we'll quickly jump around and see who's got what. As Jonathan's up to a thousand golds, already got his headdress. So he's looking pretty good in terms of uh, his item progression. Two thousand gold up on the Templar Sash and with just treads. Yeah, typical support stuff on... Uh, Radiance Both supports on the Dire side with the, the Venge looking like she's building towards a medallion. Medusa hurting a little bit. Attack. Phase Boots, Aquila, 1400 gold. Let's move on to uh, the Radiant side here. It's 14 plus Radiant 2. Got his fortified. Orb of Venom in the making of drums. Top tower is under attack. First tier, tower typical support items. Attack. Action in the mid lane as they've TP'd the Lion down here. Schwan comes out of the jungle. Throws down a Doom, but he's going to run into Sparky the Sharky. 
She's gonna stun him up and looks like that Templar assassin will be able to get away safely. Is under attack. Is, uh, there we go, that doom wears off. And looks like that's gonna be the, uh, the end of that engagement. Good look at Schwan as he's got his uh, tranquils and drums. Just your support items, and we see the anti mage get up to 750 gold. So, still on his way to his battle fear. It's going to be a little bit slower than uh, I think he would have liked, but he's, I mean, not, a, not certainly not a slow time. And while I was going over those radiant items, the blink dagger was picked up by R. Schwan comes in from the side, this time doesn't have Doom, so he's not going to be able to use that. Either way, the blink away was there from the Templar Assassin. And now, Schwan's still on the hunt, he's going to run into damn Daniel, he's going to get an attack off. But unfortunately, doesn't have enough mana to use the Winter's Curse. He will now as he uses a stick. This will allow them to lock down PZD if they choose to turn around, but doesn't look like they're going to. They're just going to kill the Doom instead. And oh my goodness, the Templar Assassin just gets deleted. Sparky the Sharky also goes down. Look at this, the Void leaping on in, but immediately gets hexed up, not going to throw down the Chronosphere. A 14 plus 2 comes in from the side, and once again, another Reality Rift. There's the Chronosphere getting thrown down, we'll just barely keep Noble Wings outside of it. But Noble Wings is frozen up by Damn Daniel, so he's not going to be able to walk away. And Damn Daniel once again just gets blown up as the Mana Void comes in from PZD. Jonathan also went down there. Noble Wings is going to fall as well. It's all oh, just a disaster of a team fight here for the dire side as Rixon Slayer. Man, that was a, a very one sided fight for them. They get a total of five kills there, just cost them their doom. And that is a very, very big gold swing. 2,500 gold going their way. Good amount of XP as well. And you know what, that's... It's once again a, a little bit worried. If you're, a, if you're a fan of this dire side, because they... They really can't afford to be losing at this stage in the mid-game. And... Yeah, this, this Animage is gonna keep farming. PZD is going to have his Battle Fury finished very shortly. And that's gonna further accelerate his ability to farm. He's gonna get more and more items, and then he's gonna be pretty strong going up against the Medusa. His ability to once again burn through that mana is going to be very, very strong at burning through the effective HP pool of this Medusa. And Noble Wings isn't going to be anywhere near as tanky as a Medusa typically will feel against uh, most other hard carries. Look at this. Reality Ref's going to pull him back as he loses a bunch of his armor. And uh, he will get swapped away by Sparky the Sharky, but that's once again a dead Ventral Spirit. As Noble Wings will hopefully try to get on out of there, he will pop the Stone Gaze, and that'll be enough to uh, to make Rixon Slayer back away. Dyer's structures are fortified. The lion's Dyer's sucking off uh, the Faceless Void there for a little bit, burning a little bit of his mana. PZD has just delivered his uh, Claymore. And R actually just TP'd down to the bottom lace. Bottom lane. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Gonna kick a rock at him. They're still just kinda posting up on this tier one tower. It has dropped down into deny range. It's five HP below that deny range. But uh, no deny coming out just yet. Because they really have no reason to. Ideally, you don't want to deny a tower as soon as you can. If the enemy doesn't have any possibility of pushing it and getting that tower gold. By denying it, you are effectively giving the opposing team some gold. Not as much as if they got the last set on the tower themselves, but you're still giving them some, um, some gold. So you want to delay your deny as late as possible, but R is going to get... Doomed and reality rifted back and he's gonna go down. Dig digs have maybe gone a little bit too far. He's gonna get stunned up by Sparky the Sharky. But oh the, ma the damage coming in from Dig Dig with the magnetized just does so much. Noble Wings comes on and drops the stone gaze. 
which will uh, prevent any further action. But once again, we have three heroes dead on the side of uh, four goons plus noble wings. And another big gold swing going in favor of Rixon Slayers. We switch on over to our net worth and we can see PZD as he's completed his battle fury. He's also our number one leader in terms of net worth. He's at 7,500. Second is going to be 14 plus two at 7,300. And then that's a little ways down before uh, before we get our third challenger. That's going to be R on the Templar Assassin at 5.8. And it's Doom, 5.3. So Schwan actually doing uh, quite well. Actually keeping pace with uh, Noble Wings, who's also at 5.4. But yeah, Rickson Slayer definitely uh, once again dominating the stage of the game as they're now leading 17 to 5. As uh, we are getting kind of close to that last game's uh, kill total. It was 25 to 5 by the by the end of the game. Radiance top tower is under attack. But now, you know, PZD is going to He's going to get out of control here with the Battle Fury. They have really no way of contesting. All the action that we've seen has been Rixon Slayer putting on some aggression. We haven't really seen too much in terms of aggressive movement from this dire side. And with them basically having no way to put on any kind of aggression, that's just going to allow PZD to free farm. And an anime free farming is just ridiculous. He's probably one of the fastest, if not the fastest farmer in the game. As Schwan actually is going to go for that tier 1 tower, but Jonathan's going to TP on in, and finally some aggression from the dire sides. They use a chrono to lock down Schwan, and it's going to score them a kill. Not going to score them any more than that, but I think they'd be alright with just that one kill. They don't really need more here, but they're going to try to go for it, and they're going to run right into 14 plus 2. Nice swap from Sparky the Sharky. Going to swap back Jonathan, but damn Daniel, just getting bursted down by the illusions of all things. And they will get the kill on 14 plus 2, so a worthwhile trade. The Winter Wyvern for the Chaos Knight. So they will take that. That'll, once again, be a good trade for them. Nice gold swing as well, giving them another 1,200 gold. So now some more fighting items coming out as the, the mech gets finished by Dig Dig. What about our Lion? He's already got his Blink Dagger up as well. He's getting close to level 11, so he's going to have rank 2 Finger Bang. Schwan sitting at 1700 gold. I wonder what his item, next item is going to be. Could be a blink dagger as well. I'm not sure if they really need it, but it'll be interesting to see what Schwan chooses to go with. PZD still hasn't picked up his next one. Just has the, the battle fury, but oh, never mind. It's going to be a Vlad's for uh, Schwan. And uh, a Yasha for PZD. I was thinking, when I saw those items, I'm like, oh, a Vlad's? Wait, he's got a Vlad's and a Yasha? That didn't make much sense. I know Andy Mage farms fast, but I don't think he had enough for that. But uh, no, it's, uh, it's a Vlad's for Schwan. And uh, Jonathan, who's in the pit right now as they try to select him, he's also picked up his Vlad's. So uh, both teams having a set of Vlad's, and now they're going to try to snake a Roche here, and I think they should be able to do so before... Uh, their opponents come in and contest. We almost have a Link since completed by Noble Links. The Medallion will also uh, help them do this. They almost have a Desolator as well on the Templar Assassin, who's now going to be carrying that Aegis. And here comes Rixon Slayer, but unfortunately it's just a little bit too late. They could potentially try to engage on Noble Wings there, but I don't think that really would be wise. And once again, they're they're ahead. They're in control of this game. They don't really have any reason to try and force any fight that may not be favorable. We saw last game they showed some really good restraint. And this game, no exception. Well, a lot of pings come out. They know Noble Wings is most likely alone here in the mid lane. They're going to try to engage in them. They're going to use the Doom. They're going to bring them down to half HP. But look at the number of TPs coming in from this dire side. As that'll force Rixon Slayer back away, but maybe not too far as they're going to just re-engage on the damn Daniel. And a great 
Kronos here. Look at how perfect that was. Not only did it get 14 plus 2, but it got all of his illusions. It kept Damn Daniel alive and allowed them to score a kill on the Chaos Knight. And man, what a play there from Jonathan. Perfectly placed Kronos here. It looks like this fight isn't done. So we've got a lot of heroes here on the dire side at half HP. The Mana Void coming in from PZD, but it's going to go right into a Lincoln's. He obviously didn't know that Noble Wings had picked it up, and it's going to cost the Animage his life. Now Dig Dig tries to roll forward, but he goes down. He does manage to get a kill on the Winter Wyvern, but the Lion's going to go down as well. It's now 2v3, with the 3 on the side of the Dire, but they're all on very, very low HP, and it's going to be another death for the Chaos Knight, as everyone on the side of Rixon Slayer goes down. It's going to be a triple kill for the Templar Assassin. The Shield Fight recap kept going and uh, popping up and going away and, and all that, but... Uh, Man, what a fight there. And somehow it goes the way of this dire side. I have a feeling the Aegis may have had something to do with it, but we still didn't even see it get used. But obviously, PZD, when he blinked in, and he, he thought for sure he was going to get not only the kill in the Medusa, but probably AoE kills from the Mana Void, as there were so many heroes already at half HP on the dire side. He thought for sure that Mana Void was going to be a big play, but unfortunately it was just into a freshly acquired Lincoln's and that completely turned the entire fight away around. It meant that the anti-mage went down and it also meant that his team had overcommitted because he had blinked in. And wow, what a, what a fight. That definitely could very well turn this game around. It definitely has gotten this dire side back in it. And with R, you know, picking up his desolator, I'm not sure if he actually had that for the entire entirety of the fight or maybe it flew in in the, in the middle. We knew he was close to it. But uh, he definitely had it on the end. At the end, but either way, they're going to have that in their next fight as well. Radiant structures are fortified. Fourteen plus two. A little bit mad's going to engage on Noble Wings, but again, Sparky the Sharky is there. He's got the swap, and he immediately brings him back. Well, here we go. The wraparound from R and Jonathan is they're going to try to engage your Schwan and fourteen plus two are in trouble. 14 plus 2 has had two very recent deaths, and it might be a third, but never mind. It's R is in trouble. He does have that Aegis, though, he will, so he will have another life. He'll be back up in a second, but the Winter's Curse is going to get cast on Dig Dig. It's going to lock down 14 plus 2 and Dig Dig. And oh my goodness, the splash damage coming up from R as he kills both of them. And then he cleans up the Lion immediately after. He gets a triple. And it just cost them Jonathan. Another huge teamfight win for this Dire Side. Radiance top tower. Oh my goodness. I, I understand the chat is uh is running on the delay, but Jonathan God Pog Champ comes out from Frempo. That's they're obviously just now seeing the Chronosphere and oh my goodness, what a play that was, but they don't even know. Another huge team fight win is just around the corner. Dyer's middle tower is what a attack. what a game! Radiant this uh, this was attack. looking very much in favor of Rixon Slayer, but it's come right back in favor of this dire side. We have a real game on our hands, and let's we haven't even looked at the the gold graph yet. So let's quickly bring it up and see where we stand. And oh my, it was over seventy five hundred, and now. It's 2,500 the other way. We've seen a 10k gold swing in under probably five minutes. Oof. I mean, some people may call that 3-2-2. I call it some damn good play by this dire side. Maybe a little bit of 3-2-2 as well, but... My goodness, it's, it's sure, surely making for a good game so far. So hopefully it'll continue. We'll quickly cycle through our heroes, see who has what. I'll actually bring it up so you guys can take a quick look. It's been a little bit difficult to follow some of the item pickups, but uh, looks like we're going to have a Manta getting completed soon by 14 plus 2. As for our Anti-Mage, he's got uh, his Manta, his Battle Fury, another 2,000 gold as well. So what a game we've had so far as... Uh, We'll quickly cover our dire side as well. 2300 gold up on Jonathan. He's got the Vlads. He doesn't need anything more than that to make big plays apparently. As, well, they may need some more as they're going to smoke up. As they're going to move into the Radiant Jungle. There's a lot of Radiant heroes down here. So they may be able to find a quick kill and get out. But it'll be very, very close. 
If they do, they're gonna find Dig Dig, but he'll just be able to roll away. And again, another very quick TP coming in from the line. This time he'll actually cancel. Sparky the Sharky. He's just picked up uh, a Lotus Orb. So look for him to uh, to use that. He's had some very good swaps so far. Mainly he's been saving Noble Wings pretty much every fight. But uh, they have been very, very good swaps. So expect him to use the Lotus Orb just as well. Dyer's Noble Wings well just finishes his, uh, his Manto style. Of course, Dyer's going with that Lincoln that we saw pretty much turn a team fight around uh, earlier on. Ars completed his Manta. Jonathan still hasn't spent that 2400 gold. It's an eye on the bottom tier 2 tower. Is Noble Link's gonna start pushing out in the bottom lane? He's, he needs to be careful! There's so many heroes nearby, they're gonna jump out of the trees. But he'll be able to back away, and now Winter's Curse getting used to the lion. It's not actually gonna lock down anyone, but it still is controlling that area. So it is still effectively CCing, and that's gonna completely zone off Rixon Slayer from being able to get up and help their Chaos Knight up there because this whole area was zoned as a result of that Winter's Curse. So Damn Daniel, although he didn't kind of lock more heroes in than that, he did a, a very good job of zoning, and it did secure them to kill on that Chaos Knight. 22 to 17, the hero kills get closer and closer. And Jonathan has spent his gold, and look, it's on a Shadow Blade. A little bit surprising there. Typically we will see a, a Blink Dagger get picked up instead. But he's going to go for a Shadow Blade. And you know what? I actually Radiant like that decision. There are a couple Blink right Daggers top. up on the side of Rixon Slayer. And if the Faceless Void blinks in, tries to throw down a Chronosphere, there is time there for the heroes of Rixon Slayer to be able to blink away. And do a kind of a reaction blink. And be able to blink away so that they're not caught in that Chronosphere. So I do actually like the Shadow Blade pickup. Instead of... Uh, the blink, but uh, we will have a quick pause here. I'm going to take a, a quick break as well to take a quick sip of water. This game has been pretty action-packed. I well, hope you guys have been enjoying the game so far. It's been a lot of fun for me to cast. I'm going to tell you, I haven't been able to cast too many games of, uh, of recently, but... Uh, the ones I have cast have been absolutely phenomenal. Think back to uh, last week, the final for SCS that I was also casting. That game was absolutely nuts. I think it was an hour and 12 minutes. We saw, I think there was three Divine Rapiers. All purchased by the same person. <laughs> by an Ember Spirit. So he had ones in a stash. He died. He dropped them on the ground. We saw Mega, um, mega Creeps go in favor of the Dire Side, but then the Radiant... You know, I almost thought it was GG. I basically called GG on the cast, but no, the Radiant side managed to hold off the throne push. And then we saw it go completely back the other way. It was an incredible game. But uh, this game, we're not an hour and 12 minutes in. We haven't seen three rapiers. We haven't seen mega creeps and then the turnaround. But uh, it still has been very entertaining so far. And uh, you know what? We may very well get to that point in the game. Noble Wings, a.k.a. the Paws Police. We got the Puppy Paws. I don't think it's a Puppy Paws. Oh my. He's going to rule book B-Diz them. I believe they're allowed two two-minute pauses. Is, is that the rule? I forget. I think so. Rarely actually see it enforced. Honestly, I don't mind the pause too much. It allows me to uh, to rest my voice. Because <laughs> who knows the kind of action that we're going to have going forward from here. So I will quickly bring up the items. So once again, you guys can can take a quick glance at them. This is a Manta-style recipe for Rixon. Slayers 14 plus 2. Right, you, can, you can see the... The two Blink Daggers, the one on the Doom, the one on the Lion. Of course, Annie Mage has his own Blink as well. Dig Dig, I, I don't think he could reaction roll away. But uh, oh, we're going to have an unpause as both teams have said G. So we have the three second countdown. Looks like this tier two tower is going to go down. Radiance bottom tower has fallen. 
Oh, Jonathan using that Shadow Blade, wrapping in behind Schwan. We do have a TP coming in from just Noble Wings. But he will drop the Chronos Root down. And a little bit of a, an interesting position there from Jonathan, but it will be good enough to lock him down. A Sparky the Sharky once again on point with the swaps. It took him a while, but they will eventually get that kill onto Schwan as they drop the Doom. The other heroes from Rickson Slayer came back to uh, defend the potential threat of pushing that tier 3. Well, Hart now getting purchased by PZD. And oh, ooh, he just blinked away before Jonathan had scouted him, and the courier so close by as well. The Manta style recipe on there. But he'll miss the courier, so he won't be able to. Uh, to snipe that and delay the Manta style. Because, yeah, it looks like it's gonna go back to uh, the fountain rather than flying to uh, the hero. Jonathan will find a hero, it's gonna be the lion, but he's forced to kind of leap away. And he'll actually just do it into the trees. I thought he got up onto the high ground, but nope. So he'll be uh, forced to sit there. Dire side starts making a move towards uh, Roche. It had already been pinged out by Rixon Slayer, of course. So we uh, have the added knowledge of knowing that we still have a minute and a half for Roche. Thank you for the little pop up there. I was I was predicting it was around about a minute and a half. Yeah, Rixon Slayer knows that uh, Roche is a very very real possibility right now. They don't have the luxury of being able to. To scout that out and see that Roche isn't available, they will send in some Manta style illusions from the Chaos Knight. Oh, PCD is going to get locked down in place. They've already gotten 14 plus 2. This was a great Chronosphere. Kill the two big carries for Rixon Slayer. And now they're going to find the line as well. And Rixon Slayer, they're going to have to back away with their two remaining heroes. This should be a free Roche for them. If, uh. Well, actually. It's actually the the respawn of that's gonna pretty much align with I think the line maybe the chaos knight maybe I'm just it's a, it's around a, mi a half a minute so maybe they won't be able to get a free Roche Radiance middle tower we'll see they may just do this tier two and then back to Roche or they could just try to go uphill and it looks like Radiance that's what the play call is gonna be go uphill deal some damage Radiance to this tier three probably even be able to bring it down Radiant the lift's going to get used. We've got 5 seconds till the lines back up. 11 for the Chaos Knight. Another 30 for the Anti-Mage. So there we go. Tier 3 is going down. The racks are being attacked now. Roche is about to respawn. In fact, Radiant's he's respawned right now. But the racks have gone down and now... Stire side will back away. Noble Wings! They try to CC him, but he's once again protected by that Lincolns. And now they'll start running back towards Roche Pit. Now it still could be a little risky for going for Roche here. We do have the Animage respawning. Look at this immediately. They know that that's what they're going to have to do. The Animage comes on in and immediately. Well time smoke there actually with uh, the Animage's TP timing. They're immediately rushing and how fast are they going to be able to go through Roche? The answer is quick. Desolator plus Medallion means a dead Roche very very quickly. So, now they're there. Are they going to fight? I think this would be very, very risky to do so. And yeah, they're going to think better of it and back away. Man, they are not scared at all of marching uphill here into the radiant side of this map. The last hero up the ramp was the Templar Assassin with the Aegis. Not really what you, you typically see, but Jonathan doing a little bit of farming, quite a bit ways away from his team. He has now just completed Silver Edge. There is a gem just recently purchased by uh, the Winter Wyvern. And now they're also going to buy a Talisman of Evasion for Sparky. So there we go, Solar Crest completed. Gem's going to get delivered to uh, Damn Daniel as well. Oh, 
Man, I, I cannot believe the state we're in in this game. 22 to 21. When it was... It was looking Radiant very, very one-sided. I think it was 17? 17 to 5 at one point? In favor of Rickson Slayer? Man, what a turnaround. And now they look almost completely untouchable. As Rickson Slayer, what are they going to be able to do here? The R is just sitting there attacking their tier 3. He's burned through that. Now he's going for the racks. And we are going to have an engage here. As PZD is going to jump in. The Stone Gaze is going to get popped. But now Rixon Slayer is going to have to go on a full defense. As the Doom has been used on Jonathan. But they're all just still running. They're just absolutely running. The Lion's gone down. He'll buy back immediately into the game. 14 plus 2's gone down, but no buyback for him. We lose Earth Spirit as well. Once again, no buyback. Lion gets deleted immediately on his buyback as he comes back into the fight. PCD tries to blink away, but Jonathan is there with the Chronosphere. We'll catch him. Meanwhile, in the background, we lose Schwan, and Gigi will get called. As four goons plus Noble Wings will take their first hero kill lead of the game and also take the game. As that GG gets called, and they'll take SCS for this week, and they'll walk away with that $100. Rick's on Slayer were so close. So, so close to uh, to winning this game. And there was that huge moment in the mid lane where, you know, Jonathan just landed. Um, I mean, he landed a beast kind of chronosphere, and then it kind of led into... Uh, the dire side charging forward and then Rixon Slayer looked like they were in prime position to turn around and fight. There was a lot of dire side heroes all sitting around half HP. The Medusa was out of mana and then PZD came in. He blinked in for the big play on the anti-mage. He threw down the mana void on the Medusa. Had that landed, it would have done a lot of damage. It would have easily killed the Medusa. Probably killed at least one other hero right next to him. But what he didn't know is Noble Wings had just picked up his Lincoln Sphere. So the Mana Void did nothing. It was blocked by the Lincolns. PZD had then been overcommitted. He had blinked forward to make that play. That then allowed or forced his team to come in and try to protect him, which overcommitted pretty much everyone on the side of Rixon Slayer. And then it just became a bloodbath in favor of uh, the Dire side. There was even a buyback by 14 plus 2 in that fight. And uh, he ended up dying back in that in that uh, engage and man that was definitely a huge turning uh, tur turning point and then after that we saw another big team fight in um, the top lane on the radiant side uh, between where the tier 1 and tier 2 towers normally are and once again that was another very dire sided fight and from there it just kind of it quickly went from a radiant game to a dire side game and uh, yeah four goons plus noble wings never really looked back from that point but uh, you know what? It was a 35-minute game, not the longest game, but honestly, very, very action-packed and a great game to watch. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. It was uh, it was definitely a lot of fun to cast, and uh, we'll do it all again next week as we cast SCS every week on this channel. Uh, so definitely hit that follow button on twitch.tv slash nizcast. I also upload all the VODs of everything I cast to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash nizcast. So if you miss the game, and you want to check it out, you can find it there. It will take me a little bit of time to upload it, but it will be up by tomorrow morning at the latest. Assuming I don't run into any uh, any problems. But uh, that's that's few and far between. But uh, yeah, once again, everyone, thanks so much for watching. I was Niz. Hopefully you enjoyed that game. And hopefully you'll come back next week to enjoy some more SCS action. As, uh, we'll be live again to probably start casting the semifinals. I want to hopefully start casting the quarterfinals as well but uh, we'll see if uh, my schedule will allow that but um, yeah everyone have a good night enjoy playing some dota hopefully you don't lose too much mmr go on uh, the plus end of the spectrum rather than the minus but uh, yeah we'll see you again next week good night everyone